in a hollow earth. I've always had a sense of devotion, sort of almost commitment towards Earth. So science and geography were always my thing. I even thought of studying Earth science at university. Unfortunately, Earth science is taken lightly because it's boring. But let me tell you this. It's boring because it's a process. Science is a process. It is said that education is a journey, not a race. So learning more about the planet is a little boy, and we just set off. Since people are waking up nowadays, an old concept has come back to be discussed. Can we trust science? Because we were all there once, sitting in our science class at primary school, repeating after the teacher, there are nine planets in the solar system. A few years later, turns out there are eight. So, I wondered then, was the teacher lying? Textbooks have built into us another fact about Earth consisting of a coal mountain and crust globe. Where did they get their sources from? How is Earth a solid sphere? Is the whole Earth theory fact or fiction? Edmund Haley argued that the variations in Earth's magnetic field could lead you to some sort of magnetic body wandering around inside, so there must be unseen circles spinning around beneath our feet. You see, Haley noticed that Earth's magnetic field was rather unpredictable and reckoned that the Earth's hollowness is to blame. Oh, and according to Haley, there's a gap in life flourishing down there. That. He proposed a theory which states, Earth is hollow with three circular layers and a more advanced civilization than ours. There are three openings to inner Earth, two near the poles and one the Himalayas. And he's not the only one. I'll give you a little distance. In 1846, Marshall Gardner used the discovery of an extinct woolly mammoth frozen in Siberia as evidence to a hollow earth. Gardner thought that mammoths and other extinct creatures ran freely in the interior of the earth. This one had run to the outside by using the hole at the North Pole, was frozen, then carried to Siberia on an ice globe. Also, Jules Verne wrote our famous journey to the center of the earth, which correlates to this theory. Now, You'd be wondering, why doesn't everyone just lie to the bowl and check into their reviews and ethics? Well, that did happen. In 1926, Admiral Richard Byrd of the US Navy flew to the North and South Coast. In his diary, he tells Frederick the hollow interior of the Earth and travels over mountains, lakes, rivers, vegetation, and animal life. He eventually found cities and was greeted by a type of flying machines he had never seen before. There's even a retired colonel in the U.S. Air Force who thinks that he and his twin sister were born in the hollow earth. Some even believe that UFOs are not from other planets, but are manufactured by these beings from Earth's interior. Now, what's to say I'm not so mad free is the next? Since icebergs are formed from fresh water, not so the ocean water, they couldn't be formed from the Arctic Ocean, but from some fresh body of water. The problem is, there is no such fresh body of water at the polar region. Now wait for it, and the theory steps in. It is thought that rivers coming from Earth's interior flow to the surface and freeze to form icebergs. Just the other day, actually, I was, uh, I was scrolling through the news headlines, and one stood out to me. Geologists baffled by massive anomalies that measure Earth's core. Could that mean? that we need to upgrade our facts about Earth's structure. Is there a whole word? Due to my keen interest in this field, I try to stay curious as much as possible. Although many people deny the validity of this theory, I still affirm that it might be true. Because one, it's literally called a theory. And the definition for a theory is a system of ideas explaining something based on principles of science. And two, we don't have evidence. Because if the Earth is not hollow, then why do the northerly winds carry more dust than any other winds of the planet? The accepted model of Earth's interior from seismological data cannot support a solid Earth because it's based upon assumptions and inconclusive evidence. So are all the other facts. How long can a fact stay a fact? Can it be a fact at all? We unravel secrets every day, we know more about the surface of the sun and the planet beneath our feet. Science is a process. Will we ever have an answer?
Oh, and now 